There we go. Oh, I forgot my music. You guys got music, or you all have music, sorry. Uh, I don't yet. Which, again, apologies that my music is better than yours. Actually, yeah, it's better. Uh, good, good, good old copyrighted stuff. Not because it's copyrighted, but because it's the stuff that they made. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking at my site, and then so somebody on a Discord I'm on asked about sites with lots of writing with lots of links because she was working on some information architecture for her site and i was like ah oh, you should maybe look at the new york times or some other like newspaper or whatever and i started looking at it and i was like you know what i really like this um so i will probably at some point also mess around with my site and do it because that's where it started right is basically a, just a pure white site that was not it was in this vein now of course i don't have nearly as many images um but I could start making images. So like, that's a thing. And of course I was messing around with it too. And I'm just messing with the colors at this point. That's a little too LSU for me. Um, but the other thing I wanna do at some point here is, uh, I'll just take this out. White. I'll make this white. Oops. So what I'm gonna do here in a minute, when I get messed when I get messed, when I get finished messing around with this, is uh order background indigo seven hundred. Wait. I think I may just go straight white with it. Cause like right now it's, I can't spell my own name. It's white, but it's got all this dark stuff with it, which I do kind of like, but it's not great or it's not all that great. Yeah. So maybe, all right, hang on a second. We're going to do this. That's already white. So we can come down here. Oh, I can move some of that stuff over to Here's the rendering. Here we go. Background gray 900. I don't think I actually have to call it white here because it's all could be white anyways. Where's my search? This is my search. Yeah, it's my search. Just format that out a little bit. Background. Wait. Oh, we're gonna make wanna make those definitely a darker color. So if we do that, oh, there's drafts. Text gray eight hundred. Give us a search up here just so we can see what's going on. See, that's not bad at all. 700. There's, this is where we randomly put in. Oh, so let's also make this like 700. Text gray, 700. This is kind of back to where I started. It's kind of funny. Background white, background gray 10, or gray 50, 100, whatever. Wow, it's weird. It almost looks like they got a gradient. I don't think I like that. What if we do it? 
I'm not gonna like this. I do not like that. Generally speaking, I think they need to be lighter. And again, I'm going to walk back into exactly where I ended. I started this stuff in a minute. Not with the crazy colors, but um. Okay, great. Five hundred. I see what that is. Gray one hundred. Gray, 100. So here's, I think this is exactly where, so if this is 200 and this is 200, it's gonna be a little bit darker. It's like a lot darker though, but I like the pop. And then if we do these at gray 100, nope, see that doesn't, doesn't work. See, the thing is, right, we can do, I think I'm going to go, and this is fun, because, like, this is all, you know, it's the digital garden stuff or whatever. I just mess around with it. Um, oops, that's very tall. I wonder if we did it just with a lighter border over there, if that helps. So that's this. Border gray 400, border gray 300. Oh, that is good. That helps frame this up or makes it stick out. What if we get a two? Hmm, that's kind of nice. So this has a shadow of large. I just want to see what happens if we drop the shadow off. I don't think I'm going to like it, but we'll see what happens. Don't like it. Uh, this is the main one. Where is its shadow? Large. What if we drop that back to medium? I can't tell if they're like colliding. All I saw was this one come back. So you can see it over here. Can barely tell, whatever. Just make this medium. See what that does. Couldn't really tell a difference. I'm trying to see if the different shadow makes it punch more at a different level. Like it makes it feel more separation because it's darker. Or it's more defined or whatever. I don't think it does. I think that one definitely needs this large. Uh, let's try XL. I really can't tell. Wait, is there a gray 50? I didn't do it in this one. We'll see what happens. There is a gray 50. I don't mind it. I 
Yeah, but I think really kind of what I want is... Oh, you know it would be interesting. What if we do that gap zero? That's wrong in the mush. Yeah, okay. I'll I'll play with that. Oh, you can tell the shadow on the bottom pretty easily. Yeah, I, I still can't figure out like the right way to make this do what I want to do. What if we make that the same? Nope. Make it darker. See, that's not awful. What if we don't put a border on it? All right, enough of this. Let's go mess with Django. I do like this a little bit of separation here. But like, there's something to be said for also just like the, just using individual lines on different places. Like, and then they've got, they're using a six, at least at this breakpoint, they're using six columns which is a nice, these column sizes are about, see, yeah, and that goes to, I think it's five columns, right? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. And then there's your four column. No, it's still one, two, yeah, I don't know. So it's six, one, two, three, four, five, six, because they split here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, is that? So that'd be. Okay, yeah, this is three. There would be another three and then a two in the middle. I think it's right. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it is eight. I don't know, whatever. I'll play around with it, but I do like this. This is very much the the look that I kind of like. And also this would give me, so obviously they have way more photos, but that's kind of cool because I could actually deal with that and actually put some photos up. Um, and then just at the bottom, you could have all kinds of links just kind of like rolling down like this. I'm going to do a design. This is, kind of the designish thing that I'm after, right? Um, right now I'm just using straight up uh, watch of things. I'm not doing anything spectacular with them, basically. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and there's, the, there's what's live. Uh, which is whatever. It's like I this is all just messing around with it. Okay, cool. Whatever. Django, 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 Django. Here we go, Django. Here we go, Django. Uh, okay. So thing that I'm working on now.
is a deployer for Django. So I want to be able to, so I'm making, sorry, um, I'm making my Django site that's going to be my tool site. And I want to be able to deploy it pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is, um, in the Django site, build a deployer for the site itself. So it's kind of the, one of those eat your own dog food things. Um, though I've heard the other way that people say it is drink your own champagne, but that's a little, how about eat your own steak? Cause champagne's a little, you know, stiff upper or not stiff upper lip, but a little, uh, Hoity toity is the best term that I can come up with. Um, and dog food's a little bit gross if you're not a dog. Uh, but steak, eat your own steak. Like it. Because it's like, it's it's a little bit up there. So, oh, Sweet and Angels, I remember that one. Um, so let's start by seeing what we got. Uh, I'm going to close out all of this stuff. I do think I'm just going to roll that over tonight and do that. Yeah, I'll probably do that tonight. Whatever. I should finish that now, but I'm not going to. This is funny because like the Django thing, I've kind of been, it's like been in my head, in all my mind for a long time. And so to actually kind of be doing it now and it, like the deployment thing was what kind of got me. I kept getting hung up on it. Um, so here's deployers. There's our deployers. Okay. So now, oh, the other thing that I need to do is the place that I'm doing the deployment or the, um, what's my thing? The standby. I'm kind of orange. I'm going to be kind of red, but it's slightly more human looking. How about about there? So when I go in the daylight, there's an open window and that has a very blue light. So you have to push in red light. Um, so get repos toolkit. Hmm. Now I'm debating whether or not, so this is like, I, okay, whatever. I can change it later. Right now the site is called toolkit, but I also have a directory called toolkit that has like command line tools and stuff in it. But I want those command line, like those command line tools all have their own repos. So there's just a, like a name flip thing there that's happening. Um, but in hooks, Sublime text, post, receive. This is where we're doing our deployment. And so once we CD into our temp directory, we're going to copy over all the files from our temp directory to our target directory after we've done them. And then what we need to do is Python manage pi make, no, migrate. We've already got the, the migrations will already be made. We need to migrate them into the new database. I don't know where the output of this goes. Echo here. So here we go. We're going to go into dev toolkit. Whatever. Um, I'm not going to pull it into the dev directory right now just because I need to, I'm going to just doing something up. Deploy happens automatically with each push to master via a post 
receive get hook get add dot get commit m update readme md get push Okay, so it didn't. Remote applying remote here. Okay, so this remote is the output. Okay. So there's it doing its thing, applying the migrations. Yeah, so anything coming over remote. Okay, so standout gets captured and probably stand error um, gets captured and sent back to the get hook. That's cool. So now, all right, so I'm going to close this down. I'm going to stop this. And we're going to come to another directory here. And we're going to go into toolkit, site. Uh, I know we can add in a minute is a startup script for this. Um, is it unicorn? Actually, I'm going to run this by itself and see, I think you can, I think we can send the port help. There we go. P is a PID file. Okay. That's not it. address B so I guess you can pass the port there that's fine um, the question is will it accept all names we will find that out momentarily because we're just gonna fire it up Forward allowed IPs, front end IPs from which allowed to handle set secure headers. Weird phrasing. Oh, it's got logs. Okay. Interesting. Redirect standard error. I send it out. Okay. Let's see what else is in here. Stat SD hosts, host port. Or the stat SD server to log to. I don't know what a stat SD server is. Oh, stats D. Stats daemon. Daemon for easy but powerful. There are daemon that runs a Node.js platform and listens for statistics. Counters timers sent over DCP and sends aggregate to one or more pluggable backends, e.g. Graphite. Cool. Hmm, okay. Dog stats D. Dog tags. Dog stat D. Stats D tags. Dog tags. That's funny. Base to use. Proxies, SSL stuff. Okay, so it looks like if we do set up a port via ah, paste, just stay there. V one twenty seven zero zero one. 80, because I just want to sit it on port 80. Error, we're trying. Can't connect to 8080. Oh, is it because it's a privileged port? Oh, come on. It's in a privileged port address. 
Um, all right, hang on a second. Booting worker. Okay, so if you run into sudo, oh come on, it's got to work. Why isn't it working? It's on eighty. Oh, is it not picking up host names? One eight seven zero zero one. Ah, what's going on? Worker timeout, critical, worker boot, worker boot with PID. Come on. Run. Do unicorn. Port 80. I could do zeros, yeah. Try putting auth bind inside your deployment script. Also, your script doesn't seem to use any parameters. Perhaps we'll place AD with bang one or. Well, there are many HD proxies strongly advise Nginx. If you choose a proxy server, you need to show clients. Without this buffering, the unicorn system to you can check hey, Nginx config. I don't particularly want to put Nginx out here too. I mean, maybe I should. I just kind of want to get up and running, right? Which I could stay on port, so it's it's silly. I could stay on port eight thousand, or I can stay on some other port, right? So if I don't if I don't sudo it and I tell it to go to eighty eighty, whatever, that works. Localhost eighty eighty. Ooh, I stand corrected. Is it gotta be one twenty seven? Oh, maybe it's just not working. I think it's working. What's going on? One two seven zero zero one. Is that bind? Am I doing something wrong there? Listening. There it goes. Wait a minute. That should have fixed itself. We did the deployment. I don't know what's going on. Okay, we'll fix that in a minute. Whoa. Oh, okay. Oh, so that bind thing isn't right. Settings. Bind 127. Response link, what is this? Oh, access log format. Capture output, syslog, sys blah, 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 blah. For example, specify the bind address and a number of workers. The socket to bind, which I think means to connect to, to hold to, right? Starting for host, host port, Unix path, oh wow. FD, I don't know what FD is. An IP 
is a valid host. Multiple addresses can be bound. One twenty seven zero zero one. What if I do localhost? Let's do eighty ninety. Yeah, see, it's still listening here. Okay, let's literally copy it. Okay, that worked. Is 8080 just is something fighting with it on 8080? Is that what's happening? I would think it would freak out right there if that was the case. No, it's working. It just didn't like the IP address. What happened? Okay, so this is going to freak out because it can't get to the privilege port. What if we do that? It's live localhost. Jokes. Well, something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Something may be fighting with it on 80 right now. So is MAMP. See, MAMP isn't. I can't get MAMP to come up, but it thinks it's running. See if I can quit it. I mean, force, I can kill it. Terminated, okay. <sighs> it's not critical, but I like, I wanna have just the name up there. It's going to be toolkit. I just want to say toolkit and be there. See, it seems like it should explode right there if it wasn't going to hit it. Net stat. This is for um this won't work here. I want to see what's on listen to port eighty. Wow. Oxygen, AWS, Oxygen XML, huh. Localhost, HTTP. Wait, something just happened there. Don't tell me I have two of these open now. I'm 
trying to figure out what's going on. So there it is now. Stop, stop. Booting worker with PID, blah, blah, blah. Does it take it a second to get alive? Is that what's happening? Because it definitely came back there in a minute. Invalid host, header launch pad. Bad request. Worker exited. Okay. So it picked up launch pad. Why isn't it picking up localhost? Also, how's it getting a call to Launchpad? What else is calling it? Oh, when I made a new tab. There it is. So what's why is it taking so long? I don't understand what's going on. So if we just do 80, 8, fires up, local host, eights. That's also taking a minute. What is going on? All right, close that, close that. Actually leave all this junk open, let's just see. So if we just do without any binding. Which goes to 8,000. See that comes right up. But as soon as we bind an address, I don't know. Okay, so this is. Uh, uh... I really kind of want it to be the right name, which, but that's a rabbit hole. Um, what is off bind?
So the path band and Mac. Download that auth bind, follow the directions with a make, etc. Run it. Make 433 available for Node.js to run without sudo. That's cool. Uh, Roo install auth bind. See if it's there. Last time it did this, everything exploded. I hadn't run it in a while, and it just it completely blew away all my Python stuff. It was not a fun time. Our core is shallow clone to get complete history run blah blah blah. Okay, so it's not in there. I'd have to do it. Um, I'm at the point where I kind of want to install for not to run web apps as root. Offbind allows you to run the application as a user, not root, but binds to 40 and 80. Why not root? Yes, because it goes crazy. Why not IP tables? I don't like this plan because it requires leaving port 8443 open on the firewall. I don't like the OC ports that are using off bind. Looks cool. I don't want to just install that though. Like just because the Mac one is, you know, some other thing. I mean, I could, I'm sure I could get the source and do it or whatever. But this is getting a little not so. App module. Running to unicorn. Host port, yeah, I mean, that's it. I don't know why it's all slow. Um, okay, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So that's on the site. Now the question is, That's a lot of gibberish. What was that from? Netstat grep 80. Crazy. Excuse me. All right, let me just clear some of this. So why didn't this apply the migrations? So if we go back, so here's dev toolkit. Close that. That's also dev toolkit. Okay, let me get rid of one of those. So Python run server, whoops, Python run server. So this is on dev. Which also runs on 8,000. So that works. But if we go into toolkit site, Python run server. Yeah, unapplied migrations. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, I know what happened. I didn't CD into... So I copied the things, but I didn't CD into target. Okay. Whoops. Just want another line right there for no particular reason. Okay, so Well, it could be deleted if you're tired of them. Um, personal collection of tools. Running on Django. Do I have toolkit in here yet? I don't. Dev toolkit open add update readme. Can you push from here? Push to origin. Never fetched. Oh. That's interesting. There's no output. I kinda wanna see the output. Whatever. It's actually not horrible. Um, so question becomes, if we get to the sites now and we try and run this, no message about things, localhost 8,000, nice. Admin, I don't have a password on here yet. Yeah. That's it, there's your deployment. That's cool. Oops, I actually wanna leave this open for the notes. That can close, cause it's broken. Okay, so there's the deployer, or there's the, yeah, the Django deployer. Stuff's actually way simpler, like, than it was in my head. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go next and how I want to do what. So I need to set up a Postgres database. So I kind of want to have, let me look at the Django config file. I don't think I've got it open right now. I don't. Uh, oh, it's going to be in PyCharm. Toolkit, config, settings. So here's my secret that I should keep secret. Django settings, generated by Django, blah, blah, blah. For more information, full list of settings. I'm really kind of surprised they don't call this out in a separate file, just so it's not sitting right there. Don't run with debug true in production. Allowed hosts. I mean that can't be what the problem was because it would still it was getting there eventually. Midware, sure. 
config.urls, okay. Templates, sure. Config, WSGI, application, sure. Database, here we go. Engine, SQLite, SQLite, whatever. Password validate. I'll get back to that database in just a second. I'll see what else is in here. Use attribute similar verity, common password validator, numeric password validator. Since this is just for my local thing. Well, actually. User attribute similar validator, whatever. We'll leave that one. Internationalization is fine. There's the static stuff. Okay, which I'll have to figure that out as well. That's a database stuff. This is where we got to figure it out. Default empty directory or empty dictionary, whatever. Dictionary containing, that's not the fault at all. Uh, it's a nested dictionary whose contents map, it's a little loud. Oh, I don't guess music's actually been going this whole time. All right, we'll do this one without music and see what happens. Now we'll get you some music, how about that? Sorry about that. Didn't catch that. <clears throat> Dictionary containing the settings for all database stuff. There you go. So next dictionary whose contents map a database alias to a dictionary containing the options for individual database. Okay. Database settings. Must configure default database. Any number of additional database may be specified. Simple as possible settings file in a database. Something in SQLite. I'm connecting to other database backends. Additional things are required. See engine setting below for how to specify other database types. That's an example of Postgres. This is what we're going to want to use. Following inner options may be required for more complex configuration. Autonomy requests, auto commit, engine, host. Which host to use in specifying database? An example. Empty example means localhost, not use the SQLite. Like starts with a slash, you're using MySQL. MySQL will connect via Unix socket, okay. If you're using Postgres by default, empty host, the connection to the database is done through Unix domain sockets, local, blah, blah, blah. If Unix domain socket is not in the standard location, Use the same value. If you want to connect through TCP sockets, set host to localhost that on Windows, you should always define host as Unix sockets are not available. Name, max age, options, password, port. Let's say time zone, is that what that was? Yeah. Hopefully everything's UTC. User test. Dictionary for settings for test databases. For more details about the creation and use of test databases, see the test database. You know what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own notes about this. Local development and hosting. So it's, it's kind of funny because like I already kind of have in my head, it's like, oh, I don't want to break anything, but like nothing's there yet. So I can break it a lot and it's fine. 
But like that's still hard for me to get my head around. Eventually this will be a post, but right now my code that makes things a post is broken on the other server, which is why we're replacing it with this one. So this will become a post that's just not in post format yet. Links. Actually, what I want to do Django Postgres database set up local dev and prod. Because the other one that I'll do eventually is this will, I'm going to have some code that'll take these things, my nodes, and put them here. Because I don't want to, I want to, this is where I store stuff. Um, so we can close this. So when I'm making a post, right now I kind of have, sometimes I make posts and I write stuff in here and copy back and forth and whatever. But like, I'm just going to start using this um, as part of the digital garden thing. And like, notes from here will just automatically float out. We'll get to test data in a minute. Following keys and tests are available. Char set, default none. Migrate, noon 3.1. Such false migrations won't run when creating the test database. This is similar to setting none as value migration modules, but for all apps. Okay. Mirror. I should actually read these. Uh, I'm not going to read these right now. Except for mirror. The alias of the database that this database should mirror during testing. The setting exists to allow for testing of primary replica. Configurations for multiple databases. Okay. Don't need to do that. Name of the database. Serialize. Spilling value. Template. Postgres the name of the template from which to create a test database, create database true, create user, user, password, table space, data file, all kinds of good stuff here. This is a very long page. Data upload max memory size, max size the request body for sus suspicious operation flies, okay. Max number of fields is 1,000. Okay, routers, format, data inputs. I feel like I'm in a different... Yeah, these are all settings in general. So I'm out of the database settings now. So... A dictionary containing the settings for all databases to be used with Django. It's a nested directory whose contents map a database alias to a dictionary containing the options for the individual database. Database setting must configure a default database. Any number of additional databases be almost to be specified. Simplest possible setting is this. So how do I... Tests that require a database, namely model tests, will not... Use your real production database. Yeah, so I need to some so I can update this config and that git push. But I'm wondering like Okay, well, let's start. Let's start with this. So let's start by getting it set up for Postgres, just in general. Um, I 
Hang on a second. Uh, sorry, I just want to look at stuff here and make sure I don't have work stuff showing up. I don't think I do, but we're going to just, just make sure. Drop, list all databases. So you Postgres PSQL. Yeah, so I, it looks like I installed Postgres on this machine in 2017. Sorry, I just need to look through these. Give me one minute. User mapping. Create user mapping. Sorry, I know this is boring. There's a couple usernames in here that whatever you can't do anything with, but. I just want to get on my, this is, so I'm just going through all my Postgres notes right now, just um, to make sure it's all cool. Okay, those are all cool. So yeah, I had 2016, 2017. I've been doing this for a little while, apparently. Um, without, you know, doing it for real. And, well, that's what my notes are for. Um, so let's actually just get set up with Postgres in general. Um, oh no, th what, so it, it did install over. It just did install a new Postgres database. Um, Cause I set that username and that's what caught it. So Where is, I thought I had something here to create a role for admin users. List all users. List all databases, list all groups. Okay, so we're just gonna say, I almost wanna see PSQL, U, Postgres, H, Wait, can you just do this? Yeah, there we go, okay. Hey, there we go. Remember that shortcut? I just saw that shortcut key a second ago. So there's one role. Yeah, so it's really roles that you have, not really users, if I remember right, right? Or is it still users? Create user, okay. Create user as a new user to Postgres database cluster. Supported versions, this is for eight, I'm in 13. Here we go, create user. Create user. Okay, so what we're gonna need is uh, 
Django Postgres database setup. So what I can do, so I'm in my grimoire here, my book of magic, but I'm actually gonna edit it. I'm gonna edit this file with uh, Sublime Text 2. There we go. Um, that way I can bounce around my notes and have this file open still. Uh, which actually I should look, check. Is NV Ultra out yet? Nope, not yet. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think this is gonna be a really slick app, but it's not there yet. Um, installed via the binary on the Postgres site. Um, create a username when you do that, which is for the Postgres user. The default user, default admin user, default pre-installed admin user Postgres. It's not obvious that that's the account name. Installer creates a username, which is for the default admin user, creates a user. creates a default admin admin user admin why not okay user named postgres when you set the password that's what it's for Log in with PSQ. Oh, so um, add Postgres Bin directory to your path. Export path bin. Log in with PSQL. You Postgres. Enter your password. Uh, so we want to create a user, and it needs to have Django admin or Django. Postgres user permissions. Somebody's already written this post that I'm writing, I'm sure, but. How do you use Postgres? Prerequisites get started. Non root user must be configured with pseudo privileges, selling components. Create the database 
database user, Postgres, shall be able to PSQL, create database my project. Okay, first you'll need to create a database for a Django project. Each project should have its own isolated database for security reasons. We will call, that's my project. But it's always better to select something more descriptive. Yeah, okay, so then I'm gonna do this in slightly different order. I'm gonna do the... Create a new user for the dev database. Like, create user. So I'm going to do database like Oops. Okay, so be right back. We'll do that in a second. See the keyboard. Okay. <laughs> uh, stand by, stand by, stand by. Be super impressive if you could hack that out. Back up one second. Okay. 
Now I got a couple users. Oh. Bummer. Well, there's the passwords I made that I'm going to have to go change now. Okay. Um, Postgres update password. I already have that. Do this right now. Great roll. Alter user username with password password. Okay. Do 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 do. Uh, stand by, stand by, stand by. Close that. Okay. So display users. So I accidentally created another one. I mistyped there. So uh, let me delete that. Drop a roll for users. Delete a roll with drop user. Drop user role name. Yeah, so there's like, they're really kind of roles instead of users, but they still call them users. I don't know, it's a weird. It's funny for me, this always goes to nine. Drop user, yep. Drop user is sim simply an alternate spelling of drop roll. Yeah, everything's really a roll, which takes me a little bit to get around. Um, so, drop roll. I don't think it auto completes. Oh, it does. Nice.
except it didn't actually. Oh. Uh, you gotta you gotta remember to do the semicolons at the end when it's sequel. I don't always remember that. I often don't remember that. It's crazy that it let me put that du in the middle of it and it didn't choke. Must uh, somehow recognize that. So these don't need to be the super users. Alter role, set client encoding. We're setting the default encoding to DF8, which Django expects. We're also setting the default transaction isolation to read committed, which blocks reads from uncommitted transactions. Okay, that's fine. That's where we set the time zone. By default, or Django project specs to use UDC. Okay, that's cool. I like all this. prod all right so the question is if I just throw all this straight at it what happens yeah cool Grant all privileges on database my project to... Oh, okay, now all I need to do is give our database user access rights to the base we created. Gotcha. So... We do then want to create the database. Here. Call these the same thing. Yes, yeah, so you really should call them user. Is that gonna be confusing? If the role is the same as the user? It is, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna do this. Um, Anything is what we should be able to do. Oh, I gotta put the passwords in. Okay, well, we're doing it. All right, that is fine. Be right back. Actually, I'm, I'm glad that I'm doing that. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to set up Nginx. Because, like, that's a good experience, right? Oh, 
so fast. Wait, minute two, yeah, blah, 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 blah. No, PSQL, U, Postgres, it's probably already, oops, Postgreg, watch out Greg, coming for you. All right, so we're going to create our databases. more I was gonna look for the DED Does that do anything objects descriptions rows I don't know what that is um so we got our databases this is cool okay so you can yeah so we're gonna give admin privileges to the users, but only to those databases. Grant all privileges on database, blah, 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 to blah, blah, blah. G-E-S, how do you spell privileges? Privileges to the databases, to the users for the individual databases. Grant all privileges on toolkit prod db to toolkit prod db or toolkit prod user. Yeah, see, I like that. It's kind of weird sometimes to ha add like db and user directly to it, but like it makes sense in this point to me. You could just call the database toolkit prod, but like I like this. All right, so I should just be able to do this. There we go. Yeah, I'm actually really glad we're putting the Postgres on here too. I was a little apprehensive about that as well, because it's like, ah, oh, putting a thing on, it's like a database, and like, it's kind of like overwhelming, but. Uh, okay, so install Django, configure the database, settings, database engine, Migrate the database and test your product, project, whatever. So, okay. Django. So the, like one of the ways we could do this is uh, 
well, so there's two things I want to deal with. One, I don't want to store the password inside the config file. I don't, like, I don't want it to get repo. So, step one is to figure that out. Let's just try and figure that out. These things are new and itchy. They're better, like they fit my ears better. This one kept falling out. This one fell out a little bit, but like this one was really just like. Okay, so we've got the grant set up. So now let's see how Where did that page go that we were just on? Is this it? Looks like it. Well, so let me actually go to the Django. Uh oh. That's bad. Should not have taken that long to open a tab. Django Postgres. It's funny that. Oh, yeah, that page I was on. It's funny that their documentation is the third page down. Let's see what this one has to offer. Bloom index, Bren index, Petri. Jeez, I don't know what any of this stuff is. Number of features that are not shared with other databases. This optional module contains module fields and form fields for Postgres specified. Oh, interesting. Oh, you can do JSON stores. Oh, that's interesting. All right, where... All right, hang on, I find something. So I don't have in my site, I've got a way in the old site on localhost that I can click and edit a page that throws it to sublime text. That is off the server that's down right now. So I have to actually go like manually look for stuff and like, it's kind of a pain. Um, prod. Content. So, grip. What did I call it? Ideas? Yeah, okay. So, ideas index. Add JSON. Fields to Django. Django. And look at other field types. Okay, that's cool. So this isn't any configuration stuff. I want to be a Postgres Pro. Getting started, create your view, installing Django, building a simple app in Django with Postgres. See, like, oh, PGA. I know the PGA tour. I'm not a fan of having all this stuff in one thing. Like, show me the command. I don't need to see your prompt. And then maybe show me the output independently, but like that's just like that's a lot to parse because really all I'm looking for is this, and this, and then this, and like I don't know, it's just a bunch of stuff. Install Django. We got that. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So I default Django for my for SQLite. Postgres just needs to be updated.
uh, yeah. Yeah, see, like, that's really the command. Anyways, uh, where's the other Django thing? Uh, Django, database, whatever. Databases. What's that just on this page? Why isn't it highlighted? Postgres. Well, hello, Ringo. How's it going? Welcome to what I'm apparently calling the digital whatever. <laughs> How goes it? Having a good Sunday? Uh, Django Space Postgres. Side copy to or higher, though the list is recommended. See host for details. Isolation levels. What is going on? Where's that other thing? Like, I know I can just copy it. I'm trying to set up a localhost version of uh, Django as like a tools site. And I'm actually putting, um, so I could just leave my SQL or SQLite as the back end, but I'm actually going through and installing a Postgres database on my machine and then setting up Postgres. And now I'm trying to do, so the, I'm going to develop on the machine and I'm going to host on the machine. So I just have to make sure I'm splitting up and I'm not, you know, the, it's not fighting itself. Um, and like, I'm not like, oh, I got to get this done really fast. So I'm just kind of like, I kick around on stuff a lot to try and, you know, see what I can see. Yeah, here we go. So this is actually, this is what I was looking for. Yeah, so post, so what's different here, and I thought this was the case, this is saying the back end should be Postgres SQL. This other one, where did I, I just saw it. It's saying to use Postgres SQL Psi Cop G2 or whatever. I don't know what the difference is. But this is the one that's in the docs. However, the Django docs have, has messed with me a few times. That's like some sound stuff. Um, oh, the the video stuff. Uh, yes. Uh, right now, my other machine is basically cutting all the videos. And then I had the assembler working. But apparently when you put. Some of the videos are 30 frames a second and some of them are 60 frames a second which I didn't realize. And when it tries to map them together, it explodes. So I've got to, I got to get a bug fix on that, but I'm, I kind of taking a break for that because I spent a lot of time on that one. So um, I'm doing this and I want to get this tool site up and running because I'm also messing with my website as well. Um, so that's, I'm taking a little break on that. I'm probably, probably this week, if not this week, next week, I'll get back into that and I expect I'll get it finished up. And then the other thing, it's just going to take forever to run it. Like, the machine that's over here has been cutting out videos for like two weeks and it's only done a couple hundred. Um, and like there's a thousand, there's 5,000 available. I'm not going to go through the full library, but like I want to have a bunch to assemble. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely in progress. The, this, this room stays warm all the time because I think just it's sitting there chewing through video like at 100% CPU 100% of the time. Um, which is probably not good for my power bill, but we won't worry about that. Um, all right, so I think I'm... Let me just make sure, is this the right version of Django for the docs? I think it is. Yeah, Django 3.1. Um, so even though... So when was this written? See, that's 2019. It's a year ago. But, like, I'm going to trust these docs. And, like, as long as it works, I don't care, but, like... It's that thing where it's like, I want the right way. Oh yeah, here you go, isolation level. Uh, Psycop G extensions. Whatever, I'm just gonna put it in and go. My, my kind of general thing is like, I mess around with stuff for a little bit and then pick one and go, right? I kind of like, I don't know, exploring a little bit and then I'm like, okay, exploring time's over. It's time to put in some random stuff and see what happens. Same. Also, I just completely lost that code snippet. I don't know where it went. 
I swear it was on this page. Oh, it's on this page. That's the same page. Oh, there it is. Cool. All right. All right, so the, the other thing I'm trying to do... Okay, so this is... Hang on, let me make sure... Does it show me a directory anywhere in here? I think this is my dev version. I mean, it should be, because I didn't open the other one. Okay, let's just try this. It's fine. Um, so Postgres, so my database... So database name... Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, make a mess and then like, okay, I've got the thing going. Now it's time to like get it cleaned up a little bit. I like that. That's a really good, really good description uh, of kind of the way that I do it as well. Piper and Pi installer to make. Oh, cool. I, so I didn't use Pi installer. Um, the, the other one. Let me know how Pi Installer goes. I'm not familiar with that. Um, and Typer. I don't know Typer. Pi Installer. Using Pi Installer. Options, sorting, running Pi Installer, Pi Installer. Pi Installer is really good. That's cool. I, I used... Um, Pip X for a command, a little command line tool that I was using, and it was a little tricky to figure it out. But I think I've got it working. You used it and you hate it. Hate it. Okay, cool. So pi, yeah, it was a little pi installer is what you're saying. Okay, awesome. I'm in. Um. Make command line tools. There we go. So we're just going to do this. Oops. Look at pi installer for the next one. Thanks to Ringo Mar for the heads up. Um, yeah, what's crazy is I'm on a discord with a bunch of people who do rust. And so now I'm like, eh, maybe I'll try some rust stuff because I don't have enough other things going on, uh, but that's cool. So, yeah. So I, I, I struggled a little bit with Pipex. I, I've got, I figured out how to get it to work and get it to go, but it wasn't as straightforward, um, as I was hoping it would be. Oh, you can do everything in one file? Oh, slick. Very slick. Writes my skip executable in this folder. Press build folder, okay. Write some log files and working files. And write some log files, yeah. Create a folder in a disk, disk, and in this folder, you find the bundled app for to serve to your users. That's awesome. Normally name one script and command line. This sounds awesome. Does this also include, like, so I was using args parse, I think, to get command line arguments coming in. Does this also help you with that stuff or is it purely for creating the installer or the the output i would assume it's just the output but i'm gonna ask the question because i'm not gonna make that assumption too hard now oh, i need to up this size a little bit actually these sizes okay yeah it's the giant one um i'm looking why i'm looking oh i'm looking at the wrong app that's why so database name, toolkit, dev, db. Use typer for that. Okay, that, that didn't, typer didn't come up the first time. Whoops, Python, typer. Build great, oh, look at this. I like the words build great CLI tools. <laughs> 
love using and developers will love creating. That sounds awesome. Based on type hints. Intuitive write. Easy to use. What's fast API? I don't know that either. If it's all typer, example, create a main file, typer, main, name string, hello name, run your application, Python main. Oh, I got you. Oh, okay. So this is type. Oh, okay. So typer. You're making the app in Typer, and then you're bundling it, or then you're making it in the command line, the actual just single command with pi installer. Okay. I'm into that. We shall add that to the mix as well. Uh, actually, let me do this while we're on the subject. Python CLI dev. I feel like I'm missing one. Um, typer. Based on Python type ends. Okay, cool. And then what was fast API? Fast is modern web framework. Oh, whoops. Did I close that? Hang on a second. I need to put this in my other notes. I get, see, I get notes kind of all over the place. And typer for the code itself. Modern fast software web framework for building APIs. Oh. Oh. Well, that's interesting. APIs, dev. Nope, not deep fake. That's a different thing. Hi, API maker. Look at that. Oh, and actually, I want to add, bear with me one second while well, I just, this is kind of the way that I try and keep track of all the stuff that I try and look at. Um, I was going to add something else here, fast API. APIs in Python and then open source. Ah, oh, bummer at the wrong key. Open source to investigate. My to investigate vit list is very long. Uh, to investigate. There we go. I think that's all of them. That's slick. Yeah, the I made the one. So I have all these MP3s that I got from Yahoo's free music library. And I decided that what I wanted to do, like, they're all like, you know, regular word names. So like, you know, uh, the lightning expanse dot MP3 or whatever, but like capital L with the spaces and like all this other stuff and like parentheses and all, everything else in the name. So the command line app I made mushed them all into like snake case. Um, and then I made a second one that actually left the capital letters, um, which, you know, I could have done that relatively easily with just a little quick script or whatever, but I use it as an excuse to kind of build a command line app. Um, I really, I'm kind of finding like little things like that to build. Like it's nice to not have to worry too much about the code that I'm trying to do and be able to focus just on like building the app or building the command line stuff or whatever. Bad at parsing JSON data. Oh, really? That's a bummer. Hmm. That sucks. Uh, Cause that's no fun. Cause that's most of the world now, right? JSON. Um, I wonder, I'll have to check with some of the crew and see if they know magic to make it less bad. Even though most of the stuff I'd be doing to start with would be command line stuff that wouldn't be, um, uh, like pulling APIs to start. Well, actually, no, I'd be pulling APIs pretty quickly and that would be JSON. Oh. Yeah, oh well.
like camel case over snake case. I'm not religious about it in any way, form or fashion. Like I've, so I started in Pearl. So I was really used to camel case. Um, my brain processes the spaces a little better in snake case. Uh, but I can deal with whatever. Like I'm just, as long as you're consistent in the code, I don't care. <laughs> but if you're like, if you're snake case sometimes and camel case some other times and whatever the other cases are, whenever, like, then it's like, that makes it, that's just like mental overhead. Yeah. And like, so I, I do, and I do snake case in JavaScript, even though it's generally camel case or whatever. Um, but it's for my, it's for my stuff. Like if I was working on a large code base where, where camel case was the way to go, I wouldn't do that. Right. I would stick with the convention. Um, I'm a big fan of conventions um, and sticking with them. Uh, okay, so I wonder, so this is just straight Python. So what I'm trying to figure out, so I don't want to store my passwords in Git, right? Um, so I've got, I'm trying to figure out how this is called. So this is a config settings, but like these are all just things. So what I want to see, well, so the first thing I should see is if, I don't know where I am, uh, dev toolkit, which is probably over here too. Oh, that's the database. Okay. I'll leave that open. That's fine. Um, Python, yeah, here, I can do it this way. Python run server. Loading. No module name Psy copy to see the Python docs. I swear or Python, uh, the Django docs. Like I literally just copied and pasted the code that they had from their documentation and it broke and it's not a, it's not a no password error. It's talking about no module. I just, I don't get it. Let's see if this actually addresses it. If you can't find psych, so this is it. Install Django, databases, database name. Oh, maybe it's just that it's not installed. Okay, that's maybe a different thing. I thought it was saying an import, but still like, I did, so this is a clean environment. I installed Django. I just copied and pasted their code and it doesn't work. Which is like, I, I don't know. I had some real frustrations with the Django tutorial. Um, uh, you have to install the blip module in your environment with with pip. Let's go over one more pip install. There you go. Oh, I was not expecting that. Why did it have to do this? There's a lot of red. Error, command status one, commands, setup tools, tokenizer. Oh, wow, okay. Command creating copying clang. Wait a minute. Is this actually doing something? It's just showing all the commands as standard error. No, here we go. Error command X is said one. 
file, blah, 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 tokenize. what I was looking forward to. Library not found for L SSL. Linker command failed. Oh, I wonder if... After putting... I wonder if, so I did a system update and I wonder if it like ate Xcode again. Oh, wait, that was it. I just saw the words that I wanted right there. Twenty sixteen. Twenty nineteen, that's close enough. At the end, yep, okay, this is what I saw. For anyone looking for a solution ten twelve or most later, I fixed this with installing command line tools. Yeah, okay. So I thought that was gonna be the case. So that inst uh, is already installed. <sighs> it's already installed. Oh, bummer. Um, Had to open up, had to open SSL installed from Brew. The following work for me. I'm gonna try that in one second. If it doesn't, you could try to link against Brew's open SSL. With OpenSSL installed via Brew, note that Brew Link OpenSSL Force does not work anymore. As Macho points out below, if it still doesn't work, you might need to use no cache. All right, let's just try this. This has been the way <laughs> The thing. Oh, there we go. <sighs> that was way better. Like, man, I, this past couple weeks, everything has done that to me, where it's like, just do this, and then it doesn't. <sighs> That's refreshing that at least that part got there. Um... Yeah, lol's right. Uh, you'll need Xcode command line tools installed and probably homebrew open SSL which will let you do this. This is what I had to do. All right, so notes, 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 there we go. So I'm did like, I don't know if you were here earlier, but like, I'm working on like the digital garden idea with my website. And so increasingly I'm just going to take my notes and just throw them out there. So I'm trying to make notes that I can understand in the future, but also other people can understand and looking at them. So like, um, and spending a little more time 
going through this stuff. Uh, but we definitely want to grab this link. Um, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool concept uh, that these people have come up with, and I'm really, I'm digging it. Um, Cause like, I mean, Stack Overflow obviously is a great place to go, but like occasionally with like this eccentric stuff, you run into it, and also just putting it out there, right? So it may help somebody, um, and it may help me in the future, because there have been a couple times when I've actually walked back into my own notes before. All right, so now, Python run server, cross fingers. Fatal, password authentication failed for, okay, good. It's talking to the database. I like it. So our database user is dev user. Oh, it's actually the server's still live. It's just not talking to anything. Uh, and so now what I want to try and do is figure out how to keep the passwords from showing up. So one, I will move that out because it's a secret key, which probably shouldn't be there. So this is going to be the user. I've got a password. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to tone test it right now. So you're going to see the dev password that is temporary on my machine. If you can get to it, if you can get into my machine and get use this, I couldn't stop you anyways. So like uh, Python run server. Cool. Yeah. So it's it's connected because it's asking for the migrations. Um, sweet. Okay, so I've got pi keychain credentials. Add. Wait, where's my? Oh, 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 it's in the scratch pad. Um, so I made a little, so Mac and Windows and whatever, I'll have their like secure password stores. So I made a little script. Scratch pad. Credential access. Set credentials. So I'm just going to set one here. Um, the. Oh, actually, hang on one second. I just want to make sure I didn't just flash a password. Okay, I didn't. Um, How does this work? Credential for value. Oh, 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 okay. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, uh, oh, I guess I can turn that back on. Um, ah, I'm all over the place. So in my password holder, so we've got this password. And the convention I use is Alan S. What do I want to call this? Um, toolkit. DB dev. Toolkit DB user. Is that right? Toolkit DB user. No, let's, so let's, I don't know. So I want to name the, so Alan S just lines everything up so I can see it. And then I can't remember if the way that I want to do it is 
product username or username product, probably product username, right? So DB dev, where is this? I just wanna make sure I'm using the right thing. So dev DB, sorry. I thought something was off there. Dev DB. Once again, I'm doing the wrong one. And dev user. Yeah, and I do two dashes in between to sep like, like as a separator. Okay, so this, if I run this. Edit credentials for making an F string. Uh, credential for. So I can run this, add a credential for there. Okay, cool. So now in there is that. So what I wanna see is if I can use my credential puller here. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. So the credential for, oops, I guess I should grab it. Is that credential for, uh, and then let me do this. Just so I don't leave it with a password in there. Some password. So this, if I run this, we should see that value come back. There it is. So now the question, so that, so that's sitting in keychain access, um, which is max keychain thing. So the question is, can I use this now to store my passwords in for Django? That was it right there. Whoops. Where is it? There it is. Uh, I'm just going to put it right up by the passwords. Uh, so we got to import sub process. Probably something else too. Get pass. Get past user. Okay. I don't know about this. This may not work. Yeah, so I'm going to install this on Nginx eventually, and this is probably not going to work on Nginx. Though maybe I can do it? I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. I mean, sh there has to be a way to do it. It's just code, right? And like, we're in the guts. Okay, so we're connecting. Uh, where did my password stuff go? Because I need to get the username right. And I just copied and pasted all that stuff. That was it. Scratchpad, scratchpad, there we go. Toolkit. So right here, and like that. That's fine. Uh, all right. Cross your fingers. Holy shit! It worked. I'm kind of amazed that that worked. Pardon my French. Okay, so... Reset security credentials. So now I'm gonna... Uh, here, I like this better. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Let me, let me undo you back into that. So now if I update it again, and 
if I run this again, I just want to make sure it really is using those credentials and not like cache something somewhere. This should fail. It failed. I'm really glad this works. So if I take that back out and I run this, so it's updated and I do that, that's awesome. That is awesome. Now we have a way to not store our credentials in files at all. Uh, that's cool. That's really cool. Okay, so this is good. So I'm gonna actually clear this now. There's a get. Cool. Uh, oh, I'm probably gonna want to set other credentials with that, but that's fine for right now. That's really cool. Okay, that's awesome. So now that we have that going. Uh, Python manage pi migrate. Yeah, it's talking to it. Okay, that's perfect. And so we should actually be able to see now. Um, Python manage create super user me no yes yes cool and then just to verify it so prs python run server 128 i'm gonna start making new windows here whoops not that way this way And if we go to admin, there we go. Um, batches, main. So this is where we're going to create some links, categories, uh, AWS, whatever. Goes under main, save, links, add a link. example.com it's like zom but com like us under aws save now if we go look at the home page there's our link so I've, I've got i keep a whole bunch of links on my uh launch page just to make it easy to get the stuff and that's where i get to all my tools and everything um but that got broke yeah so actually uh launchpad prod Ideas, checklist, how to, where is, so this is what I'm recreating. Um, but this is just man all like all manually done. Um, so now I'm gonna have a back end for it so I can go do it. And then there's also a whole bunch of tools that I do that like if I click on things, they make processes and run stuff and things. So that'll that'll run there as well. Um, oh yeah, this is JavaScript. I was like, how does it get the time? It's a JavaScript pull. Um, sweet, okay, so that's cool. So that's, that's the first start. So then what I need to do is what? So that's the password. So I need to have Hmm. Where does you where do you switch? 
so I need to have basically, so I'm doing the development on the same box. So I need to have a switch to talk to the databases, right? And so somewhere out there, I need to be able to say, hey, for this database, go to A or go to B. Um, so how about this? Django switch databases, databases. How to switch to a new database. Delete the migrations. This was your mistake. Yeah, don't delete the migrations. You want those. Do this for all. Now add your new database and settings. Do not remove your old one yet. For example, if I had a new blah, 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 blah. You can now remove default, load data, data JSON, database new. The procedure mentioned in the answer is taken from this blog, from your blog. Okay, cool. Good for you. How do I multiple databases? First step to using more than one database in Django is to tell them about the servers using done database settings. Database can have any alias you choose. However, the default alias has special significance. You need to be careful to always specify the database you want. Django requires a default database to be primed. The parameters can be left empty. Synchronizing your database. Using other management commands. Automatic database routing. Database for read, database for write. Yeah, see this is not. Manually selecting a database. Selecting a database for save. Selecting the database for delete. Exposing multiple databases in the admin. See, this is not, I wanna switch databases. I don't wanna migrate. Switch database, whoops. Django, switch, database, dev, prod. So yeah, somewhere out there, like I want a flag that says switch. The Django settings module, environmental variable, controls which files, which settings file to load. Therefore, you can create separate configs respect to your environments and use that. Here's how. Let's assume you created my app, Python, my app, testings. Setting using a script or using a shell script. Using a process manager. You're not fond of writing a bootstrap script that sets the environment, and there are very good reasons to feel that way. I can use in process manager. Supervisor lets you pass environmental variables to manage processes using programs environmental configuration key. Hancho, pure Python, lets you define environmental variables. I don't know these. When is this from? 2012. <laughs> By default, use production settings, but create a file called settings dev in the same folder in settings pi. And it writes there, such so like true. Add this to, yeah, see on the computer that we use for deployment or development, right? That's the trick. See what you could do. I 
I don't like any of these. Um, this is all old. Data mismanagement and Devon Prod. There we go. 2018, what you got? Right now, you're using if else clause to switch between the environment and the database. Yeah, see, this is where I'm headed. But instead of using this, I think I'm just going to look for a file. I can't see any serious problems with the solution. No, and if you're happy with it, you can safely go ahead with it. Things make it more complicated. If you want to have other things that differ between environments, for example, Python aware, our front end is Django application. The life site not only has database settings, different PayPal API, blah, 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 blah. And if you use a big if statement to contain the different bits, it can become unmanageable. A popular solution, however, is to have multiple settings files. Instead of having a settings.py file, you have settings the same location, blah, blah, blah. The final step of local settings file also sets the settings directory if you're using git, git ignore. It would be something you'd create when you check out a repository. It would just import stuff from whichever environment you wanted to use that code for. For example, from production, it would be this. Hope that helps. Indeed, I've already had base then I've prod, but somehow I did not manage to separate the database configs, but I tried it again, now it works. So I got rid of the switch. So I've got a deployment script set up. Um, this is one of those where I'm a little bit stuck on like, which way do I want to do this? Um, so I guess what I could do is, what's, what's Python's file exist? Check if a file exists. Um, from path load to import path, so that's already there. So what I'm going to do, so I want to, I want to go to debug in general. I'm mean, sorry to dev to as the main thing. Like I, I don't want to unintentionally go to prod. So if path production.txt is file. else. Well, really what I should do, this is, that was not a good place to do that. We'll set this up top. Builds paths inside the project like base stir. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, If that's in the file, um, is config a word in here? Config URLs, config, config. I don't want to. I don't want to config values. Let's just do that.
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look for a file and if it exists, then uh, we'll do production. And if not, we'll do not production. So database name, database password, database user, uh, I'll deal with the secret key later. Uh, no, we'll do it now. Like, I know this is tedious, but I want to just set this up once. So database name, user, password, secret key. Oh, I'm going back and forth. I'm going back and forth. Where am I going? So we're gonna, and this needs to be up here. Now the question is, so if I'm running this yeah, this is going to take some time to, to figure out. Because when I run this over on Nginx, I don't know that this way of getting the security credentials will work. But if I repaste them through there, possibly it will. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm sure I can make it work. It's just it'll be possibly slightly tricky. Why is that orange? Probably because it doesn't like it because it's not here. Why is that orange? Expected two blank lines. Okay, whatever. Um, database name. Oh, I just cut it out, didn't I? Was it just localhost? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's toolkit. So I just want to do a tone test here. We're going to try one thing. So this database name is actually prod db. Prod user. Get credentials. Credential four. LNS. Database. User. Secret key. Toolkit site, secret key. All right, so there's that. Else, and this all becomes dev stuff. Dev, dev, dev. Dev, dev, toolkit site, dev. Something jumped over there. It's kind of crazy. 
prod. Dev. Okay, so let's just test this. So it should happen. This sh still should work. Uh, because I'm so the only thing I'm looking for is the database name, and I've got that lined up, and we don't have that production file there. So the way that this is going to work is in dev, the file it's looking for doesn't work. That file I will only trigger or only make it in production, and so that will flip it. So by default, we're in dev. Um, so let's see if this works. Nope. Specified item cannot be found in the keychain. Watch your files. Oh, 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 that's okay. I would put, yeah, I haven't put those in yet. But it still worked. It's still connected. Sweet. I don't know why that's going there. Whatever. I'll do that later. That's a different thing. Um... Okay, so let me load in. No, let me do. So let's do a deployment. That's not going to work. Um, to diff between dev and prod. Okay, so what should happen is I've got a post commit thing happening for GitHub. So if I check out um, master, merge, no fast forward dev, And if I get push, there's all it's running all my deployment stuff. Operations to perform, applying admin, no migrations to apply. Oh, okay. So it tried. Yeah, it actually tried to call it. And the uh, okay, that's cool. That's fine. Okay, so let's go try and run it on for real, which is in toolkit site, Python run server. Yeah, so it runs and we still don't have the keys in there. So now, oh wait, that's prod. Why is that point? Oh, because we didn't change the database yet. Okay, okay, this makes sense. All right, cool. I think this is, I think we're working. So get out of this. I really would like a drink right now, but I don't have anything good. Um, Wait, I'm not sure how that connected. Oh, 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 yeah. No, the production file wasn't in there yet. Okay, that's fine. This We'll test this. So username, user, or database name, username, password. You could do host and you could do port, whatever. It's fine. It, we're all doing localhost. Everybody's doing localhost. So now I just need to put in these values.
Uh, okay, so we can do this. Database, password. Okay, yeah, so now I'm actually going to blur this out in just a second. Um, and by second, I mean like any second now. Uh, yeah, all right. I gotta do some password stuff. Which, you know, it's only on my local machine, but still, it's password stuff. What happened down here? Something happened. Yeah, bear with me a second. I'm just going to have to burn through these. And again, if you can make that happen, you deserve to get in my machine. That was prod. Okay, that was prod. That's right. Toolkit, prod, db, secret key. Which is a very long word. Okay, so that's those. Do this for a second, just make it easier to get back and forth. So dev user. Need to change this one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Something is definitely caught in my throat. So just did that, we need this. Toolkit. Dev. Secret key.
Oops. Alright, one more thing I need to do, which is... Change the user password for... Alter user toolkit dev user with password I know this is riveting riveting stream stuff dev user password Okay, I think that is all of them. Let us see. So now we're on... So we're on dev. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see if this if we got all of them. No. Why didn't that work? Specified I'm going to be found on keychain. Sure it can. I copied it straight out of there. Oh. Security. print this database user database password oh, there's a password again I got to change that secret key didn't show up Sure didn't go, okay. Um, I don't know how I missed it. Getting fuzzy, I guess. But I need to change them all anyways, because I just flashed them, but. Um, site dev secret key, I really thought I just did that. Just didn't put it in. Whatever. I swear. Oh, I just not. Have, I must not have run it. Uh, 
crutch arm. It's cool to know you can print stuff in there. And it's just going straight to the thing, so that's cool. Oops. Front server. Okay, now I find anything. Okay, so. We're still there, right? Admin. Links. This link. Oh, I did it backwards. That's why. Example.com link. Okay, save. Cool, so that's talking to the database. And that's the dev database. Now, the question is, if we do this deployment, uh, finish updating for dev prod config split with credentials in key chain. Git push. Remote. Applying all migrations. Running migrations, no migrations to apply. Oh, okay, cool, okay, cool. So I think what's gonna happen, hang on, because this still, if we run this server, this is still gonna be talking to the dev database. But if we, uh, I guess look at it in here. Um, but somewhere, if we touch this file, hide that on server. Mm, should have talked about migrations. Okay, I didn't do it. Maybe it has to be here. Password failed. Perfect. Prod user. Okay, cool. So that's now using, so now if we go here, this should disappear. Oh yeah, I guess it really disappeared. Um, okay, password failed for that user. Okay, okay, okay. SQL you Postgres. There we go. Uh, okay. Alter user this with password and then be right back. That's toolkit, we don't want that. Toolkit, site, PRS. 
failed password authentication. That's confusing. Possibly there's something wrong. Um, I mean, it's we're close though. This is like it's talking. It's just got the the wrong database connection somehow. So hopefully, database prod dev credentials prod user. All right, one more time with the password stuff. Why does I keep doing that? Don't do that. Do that. Uh, all right. See if this does it. Whoops, that's not gonna do it. Okay. I literally just copied and pasted the same thing. It must be, I might not have the permissions set up is my next guess, or my, the database connection set up. Grant all privileges on database DB prod to, I'm pretty sure I ran that. Freak me out. Puts toolkit prod and toolkit dev. I don't remember creating those. Whatever, we'll see what happens. Come on. So P S Q L U that whoops. Well, thank you the password. Now you know why I don't work on production stuff. Fatal database does not exist. Oh, that's what it is. No wonder. I did not create the prod database, apparently. Wait. The other one has to exist. Right? Dev. 
User does not exist. Okay. Hey, see ya. Sorry this was just fighting all this crap. Have a good one, man. Take it easy. We'll see you, Ringo. <laughs> Next time will be better, I hope. <sighs> yeah, cheers. I gotcha. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, swing on by. Uh, most nights, right? I'm gonna finish this, and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Or I'm at least gonna, I'm gonna chill out. I'm not gonna go to sleep, but I'm gonna chill out. So I hope you chill out. Have a good evening. We'll catch you next time. And let me see what I did here. Um, wait, if you just create user, does it ask you for a password and give you like, oh uh, wait. Oh no, you gotta do it in SQL. Whatever, okay, this is fine. I'm just, we're gonna do this. I'll change the passwords again later. You, Postgres. 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 Moving energy. Uh, Alright, so we're gonna find out where we're going. I'm starting to lose it. Um, where did my notes go? There they are. And then where's my password manager? There it is. So here's dev. I don't know. Wait, how the... How did the other one work? Like, how did this work? I am super confused. Oh, wait, do you have to connect to a specific database? I'll bet you do. That's what's going on. Yes, I want to be pro. Great. Pardon me. Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P, port number. D, database. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. That makes more sense. P, SQL. I was like, how could those not be there? All right. So here's our user. Database is database. Ask for the password. We're connected. DT. Display tables. Okay. There's our database. Um. Make sure root the root database goes like this. PSQL you post grass done for a user to connect to a specific database use the SQL U username D database name okay so that's good so now let us look at the other one PSQL U 
toolkit prod user. Password. Oh, whoops, I didn't do the right thing. Toolkit prod db. That, oh, what, kid. I like kit. It exists. Okay, so what is going on? Site, whoops, toolkit, site. Python on server. Password authentication failed for user. I have a, I have a thought. I have a thought. I think I know what's going on. If we scroll down. Nope. Okay. I was wrong. Database name, database user, password. Okay. No, nope, those are all there. I thought maybe I didn't do one of those. Database name, toolkit prod DB, toolkit prod user. PSQL, you, this username. Oops. That was the database name. You, this username, D, this database name. Okay, that worked. So somehow, server watching for stat reloader or stat exception on Django main thread. Password authentication failed. All right, one more time. So, uh, That is the password. So the other possibility is that somehow the key is wrong. That's the key, don't do that. So if I paste this, which I just copied out, nothing changes. Oh, come on. Ooh, okay. Again, everything just hasn't been the smoothest of late. Like, I mean, a lot of development stuff is this stuff, right? But it's like, 
this is kind of the stuff that's like, this one should have worked. Um, I don't need that production text file. We got this other one. So. Uh, config settings. I just, I'm going to edit, you know, the production file now because it's broken. Like I, it's gotta be something simple. Um, and once again, I'm just printing stuff out. I guess I could hide it. It's still working on it. Database user, database name, I feel like there's got to be a file somewhere that's making it think that stuff exists that doesn't. But like, okay, so here's... So here's literally what came out of that. So here's our user. Or, sorry, that's a database. Here's our user. So it's asking for a password. Here's the password. It's literally what's in the config file. What am I missing? Databases. We're going to Postgres. Name, database user. Or database name, database user. Credentials. <gasps> I've looked at that 18 times and it's just sitting there. It's literally right here. We're not we're not using the password from the thing. So this is, I think this is on dev for toolkit and I was somewhere around here. I'm sure it shows me like the path of these files, but or like the directory. No, oh, can I do this? Is this good to dev? Oh, look at that. I'm not gonna mess with that right now just cause time. All right, what's on that one? Nothing, okay. Get add dot, get commit m, fixed bug with hard coded dev db password. Get checkout master, get merge, no fast forward. Dev. Get push. 
See, I did something up there, and it, uh... It updated... I think when I... Oh, it ran the migrations. Um... Uh, um, I'm losing it. Yeah, it's a little later. Uh, okay, here we go. So it ran the migrations. That's cool. And those migra oh yeah, that is cool because that ran the migrations on the database or on the what's your thing on the prod database. Oh, I'm excited. So Python manage pi create super user because we don't have one of those yet. Oh, I gotta fix that. Oh, always allow. There's an always allow button there. Python run server. That's a good sign. Hopefully nothing's there. Nothing's there. Okay. Sweet. Admin. Batches. Batch. Main. Sweet. Categories. Add category. AWS, which goes into main. Links. Add link. Um, S3. S3 link. TK, TK, TK. Save. You site? We're there. All right, so we're in production and we got a deployment script going up. Okay, that's cool. Or we got a de deployment set up. So now I can actually make stuff. That was a long time. Um, yeah, that was a long, that was a lot. Uh, now I gotta go change all those passwords. Create databases. Set up config project settings.py with this. There we go. Um, This is what prod prod PR prod. Yeah, definitely using it. Prod user password, prod secret key. Did 
dev. Dev. Dev database. Prod. Prod username. I think that's all of them. Then later. Bad, whatever. You can do this. It's fine. Um. And dev the production that text file won't exist. Just make it in prod and that will switch. To that database. Set up. Okay, that's cool. But what's also cool is now, like, this is cool. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. So now I'm like actually in there. And so I can go make stuff now. Like I've got I've got my separate environments. Like basically I was semi-dreading the couple hours that I just spent doing all this stuff because I knew it wasn't gonna be just awesome. Um But we're there now, and so we've got it. Now, like this is one of those parts of the process where like this is just getting the environment set up like and that's not the funner part of this but like until the environment's set up you can't actually do anything with it right so we're set up now we can do stuff uh and like i've got this little link thing going so this is like this is the main th this is one of the main things i was after right because i've i've this used to work on a local website now it's just a file that i've pulled off so um I will be rebuilding like some of these are actually tools, right? So like this little gifs is it a, is a page that displays my gifs, adds them, cuts them up, lets them move to a place where I can uh, easily deploy them or easily send them or whatever. Uh, like this alphabetize is actually like a JavaScript thing. Oh, it actually went somewhere. How did it get that? That's cool. Well, I'll make it that easy to copy. Just a little alphabetizer page. Um, Oh, I guess I'm just running around locally. So if that was an HTML page, it probably would show up. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. And now I can add in all these Amazon ones um, because I like click being able to click to them to get to them quickly to get to the various services. Uh, it's nice. Uh, streamers, like whatever. And I'll, I'll end up having more links now that I have this because I've always been manually editing this page, which is not the funnest. But if I've got something now where it's like, ah, quick command for and get through there, then sweet. That's awesome. So I think that's going to wrap me for now. Um, I will. Oh, wait for refresh. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> like, what was that? Three hours worth of work, three and a half hours to get to that. But like, it's cool. And also, why is the three below? That is disconcerting. I don't know what's going on there, um, but whatever. So appreciate it. Y'all have fun. Be kind. We'll see you next time. Later.